Hi everybody, it's Jen with Jen's Resin Creations and I want to resin everything but the children. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how I took resin, some mica powders, a little bit of pigment, some fire glass, and bedazzled this gorgeous Texas. Uh, I'm going to put a little hook on the back so it can be wall art. And it's gonna, it just looks great. I think it turned out really great. It, I think it would go, if you're a Texas Longhorn, this is for you. And so I'm gonna show you how I got it done. I was working on another project earlier uh, and had some pigment left over. As you can see, I first put down a layer, a clear layer of resin. So the resin has something to go over. You always want a base coat unless you're just like piling on resin. If you got a pigmented resin that you've already mixed up, you don't necessarily have to have a base, but you can't, resin won't move over something dry. So it has to have, you have to have, uh, it, you have to have it covered in resin. So first was the base coat of clear. Then I came in with angel white. Angel white should generally be, um, Angel White should generally be not on the bottom, but it, I wasn't worried. It was what I was using in the previous project. I had some left over, and I wasn't worried about lacing and selling so much, so it didn't matter. And if you want lacing and selling, Angel White needs to go on the top. Um, so these colors here, the first one I laid down, so again, it was the Angel White. The next one, the, the darker color, that is Baltic Days Maple really great color the next one is a, a more of a gold color that is the cinnamon sugar by baltic day um baltic day uh, i've used their 24 pack is it 24 or 25 i don't remember um but they just recently came out with a 50 pack i'm gonna link it in the description below i highly suggest you check it out M those mica powders are spectacular and they have a whole new range of gorgeous colors these three that I'm going to show you, two of them are already down. Um, they are excellent. And I also I, I, I also really love their black. The black is a solid black. Um, I'm not using it today. Just giving them a shout out. Anyway, so I laid down all my pigments. And uh, now I'm just heating and blowing and just kind of moving stuff around. Um, just going to keep... Uh, I wanted... Uh, this Texas was already, I had already uh, spray painted it with black and I wasn't really sure what I do, was going to do with it. It was just kind of sitting around for a couple of weeks. So um, once I pulled it up for this project, I just, I, I really wanted to leave a little hints of black. I didn't want to necessarily cover it all the way up. Um, so I just, I, I kept a few little spots, as you can see, of um of black up through the base that and you just leave clear resin you just you just continue to use clear resin in the little spots um here i'm coming in with the mayron gold it's it's a it's like a staple of all of the resin people um it is a go-to it doesn't cost much you get it from amazon and a, and it just lasts for a very long time um, you get more bang for your buck. Now here is the champagne pearl. It's a, it's really, really pretty. And I'm, you're not going to be able to see it. You can't see it well within here when it's done. I, I, I don't think the camera does it justice, which basically happens all the time, but it's a shimmery, um, shimmery pearl kind of, but it also has, you know, like a champagne. It's kind of got a a, a, not a brown, but a, a little bit, a hint of a goldish color, I guess you would call it. I don't know. It's just a little hint of color to it. So it's not just solid white, pearl, pearly white. Um, if you know me, I love to zhuzh. Uh, so I'm just doing a little swipe, swipey zhuzh with my, uh, I don't even know what that little tool is called. I know that the people who paint use those things. Uh, I'm not a painter, but, um, I like to use this for, swiping and all you have to do with resin is take 91 percent isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel and you can pretty much wipe resin off of everything so whenever you're using that little tool like that you just wipe it with the with the paper towel and then swipe again uh it's a, it's just a quick easy swiper 
Um, so now I'm just coming back in with some more angel white. All I'm going to do at this point is just keep kind of uh, tweaking it and and trying to get it to where I want. Um, if you're new to resin, uh, give you a couple little hints really fast. Uh, again, I use, I didn't even know if I mentioned it yet, I use Stone Coat counter, Countertops uh, Art Coat for this. It has a really long working time. Um, you will always basically read the directions and follow safety instructions, but resin you should stir really, really well for three minutes, the part A and the part B. Stir those really well for at least three minutes. If the instructions say more, do more. Follow directions. Um, but then... Um, so then I just, then I, I, for these were mostly mica powders. So mica powders are, um, I, you want to do 10% of your pigment to your ounces of resin. I will probably say this in every video I do. I didn't go to math school, so I don't judge percentage. I don't know what that looks like. Um, here, right here, is another what, what another little tip. Uh, I learned this from doing the doing the mirrors that I have done previously. If you go back to my channel, you'll see I did a, a mirror. Um, if you just pour some clear resin, it'll it'll push the pigments out of the way, and it'll settle down so you can see what what's at the bottom. And I really wanted to have um, I really wanted to have again show some of the black now at this point I'm like I didn't necessarily want a giant hole right there that's too much black so you just keep working with it that's the good thing about it you have plenty of time to just keep messing with it and messing with it and tweaking it and adding to it the the, the kicker is to not do too much you got to know there's a fine line of when is enough and when you when you need to keep going and when you have ruined it. I've ruined a bunch of stuff by not knowing when to stop. So uh, right here, I'm just zhuzhing a little bit more, trying to get a little bit more swiping, a little bit more blending at the bottom. And now I, I'm about to start, I believe right now I'm about to start. Oh, yeah, I'm going to finish right here. This is the last bit of... Um, last bit of blowing in the heat that I'm going to use. And then I'm going to come in and start using, putting fire glass around the edge. Um, fire glass, I believe, I, I, I usually get fire glass from two different groups. Um, um, I think this must be the barbecue guys, BBQ guys. I will link them in the description as well. Um, they, I get pretty good they have uh, that you can get fire glass at a really really great price from them. I also get it from Starfire Direct, I, but I don't think that's what these are. I think these are these are champagne maybe champagne color um, fire glass. But anyway, um, as I, I back to a little hint for these thinner uh, cutouts that I got from Walmart generally they overheat and they bow so they that they bow in the middle and the stuff they bow up so your resin flows off um that's kind of what i was anticipating but that's not what happened here what happened with these is it, they didn't it didn't bow and it didn't uh it didn't throw off go off the sides it actually started sucking the bedazzles the fire glass it started sucking it in and I kept having to come back and um uh I kept having to come back and push them out to the edge I, and I didn't realize it was going to keep doing it so at the end you might notice that kind of at the top and in some parts of the edges that um it it didn't stay at the top. So the next time I do another one of these, and, and a tip for you is, and if it's a thick piece of MDF, this is not going to happen. It's going to sit where you put it, and it's going to stay there. But the thinner pieces, um, just keep checking it, that that your, your fire glass or whatever you're putting on the edge has not rolled off, or in my case for this one, it rolled back in. Now listen, for this right here, this reminds me of where... I'm like, just like when I'm baking a big, huge batch of cookies and I'm sick of making cookies and then I'm just like, oh, this is taking forever. <laughs> I'm ready to just dump all this stuff on here. It's tedious work. You got to take your time 
and the end results are worth it if you just take your time. I did end up, I think my husband called me during this, and so it stopped videoing, um, but you just keep going around. I think, I, so it, the rest of it's cut off. It's going to cut off in a second. You're not going to see the, the full going all the way around, but you get the idea. Just keep be dazzling. Just keep putting that fire glass one at a time. I didn't really want to dump it. I wanted to make sure that, uh, try to get the, it was mirrored. So I wanted to put the mirror down. Anyway, yep, my husband called in the video, stopped, and I didn't get the rest of it. But anyway, here's the end result. Um, again, hint is to even maybe an hour, two hours in, keep checking it to make sure that the bedazzles, that your your fire glass, your stones, whatever it is that they that they uh, stay on the edge. All right.